Hey everyone, welcome back to Lazy Programmer. In today's video, we will be continuing with securing our Spring Boot application using JWT. Previously, we have covered the basics of implementing JWT authentication without role-based access control. Now, security is not just about authenticating the users. It's also about managing who can access what. That is where role-based access control comes into play. Role-based access control allows us to restrict the access to certain parts of our application based on the roles of the user. So in this video, we are going to implement RBAC in our Spring Boot application, creating two endpoints, one for the admin role and one for the user role. This will allow us to demonstrate how to control access using the roles. On top of that, I'll also be showing you how to upgrade your JWT implementation to the latest version. We will update the token generation and validation logic to get rid of deprecated methods and make sure we are using the most up-to-date practices of JWT security. Now, if you already have the code set up from the previous session, then it's great. Otherwise, you can quickly clone this GitHub repository and create your own branch. I want you to implement the changes with me so that you will have a proper hands-on experience. Because believe me, you can watch as many videos as you want. You will only understand it when you implement it while learning. So if you are ready, let us start. To implement a role-based access control, first we need to create a new entity for roles. This will help us define and store the different roles in our application. So each role will have a unique ID and a role name like a role underscore user or role underscore admin. This entity is mapped to role underscore details table in the database. Now we also need to manage the database operations for this entity. For that, we will create a repository interface. This interface will allow us to perform CRUD operations on roles. It also has a special method which we will use to fetch the list of roles based on the list of role names passed. Now that the roles are set up, we need to update the user DTO class to get the list of roles from user during the registration step itself. We will also need to update our user entity. Here we have established a many-to-many -many relationship with roles. That means a user can have multiple roles and a role can have multiple users. We will not complicate things here by defining bidirectional relationship because that is not required in our case. But if it is required in your project, you can customize this and manage the join table on your own. The set of roles will be fetched eagerly. That means when the user is loaded, its corresponding roles will also be loaded at the same time. To save the roles when a user is created, we also need to modify our user service where we are saving the user details during the registration process. We are fetching the roles from roles repository based on the role names passed. And then assigning the retrieved roles to user entity before persisting. In case the roles are not available, we are throwing this exception that roles are not available. Now we need a way to load the roles into our application. For that, we will need to create a controller and service to load the initial roles into database. This is the controller with a single endpoint to load the roles and return success if loading is complete. Now let us implement the service class as well. In the service class, we are simply creating two roles object and saving them in the database. This implementation will load two roles into database when we hit slash API slash auth slash load hyphen roles endpoint. Now the roles creation part is done. Now we have to add these roles in the security context in the user principle detail as well. So there are two ways using which we can implement it. One is during the token generation, we can add role as a claim and during the token validation, we extract the role from claims to set the authorities. Second option is 
not to add role details in the token but during token validation we can utilize the user entity and set the authorities accordingly in this video we will go ahead with the second approach if you want to try out the first approach you can do it and if you face any issue please let me know we'll try to resolve the issue now for the second approach we will update our user detail service to associate these roles with the authorities currently you can see we are setting authorities as an empty list we will take the roles from user entity and set the authorities to user details dot user object this will allow spring security to handle access control based on the authorities of that user finally we will create two secure endpoints to demonstrate rbac in action one will be accessible by both user and admin and the other will be restricted to admins only in this we have used this annotation at the rate pre authorized and mentioned which roles are allowed to execute this method like in first method users having role as role underscore user and role underscore admin will be able to access and execute this method for any other role application will raise access denied exception so if you are logged in as user or admin you will be able to access slash secure slash user endpoint but only admins can access slash secure slash admin now we are done with all the changes required let us just start the application and test these scenarios. Let us first load the required roles using load roles endpoint. Now let us create a standard user with role underscore user authority. For this, let us pass username, password and roles in the post request. Here you can see user is created. Now using the username and password in the body payload, let us generate a token. Now we have the token. Using this, let us try to access the endpoint which is allowed only for the user. Here you can see we are able to access it. Now using this token itself, we should not be able to access the admin endpoint because user does not have admin role assigned. So let us try to access the admin endpoint also. This we are also able to see we are able to access which is not correct. So uh, what could be the issue in this case? I think we might have missed some configuration on our side. Let me just see what it is. Uh, we have used pre-authorized annotation for both the users correctly. Uh, we also uh, are setting authorities in the user detail service. Okay, I got it. So we have used pre-authorized annotation, which is a method level security annotation. This type of security is not enabled by default. We need to enable it. To do that, we can simply use one annotation, which is at the rate enable method security. Okay, uh, now we should be good. Now again, create a new user with role underscore user and obtain the token. Now using this token, let us try to access the admin endpoint again. Here you can see we are getting access denied, which means our implementation is working as expected. Now let us create another user, but this time with both the roles assigned. Now the user is created. Let us obtain the token for this user as well. Now this token is for a user who is having both the roles assigned. So we should be able to access both user and admin endpoint using this user. So here you can see it is working as expected. Now in this way you can implement and control the access of your resources based on the user roles. With this role based access control implementation is complete. I hope this part is clear to you. If not you can rewatch the implementation and testing part again or you can ask your queries in the comment section. Now moving to the second part of the video which is to upgrade the JWT version and getting rid of deprecated feature usage. The latest version of JWT at the time of recording this video is 0.12.6. So we will be using the same version. Now start with the changes in pom.xml. For the JWT related dependencies, we need to update the version to 0.12.6 
and refresh the maven changes so that it can download the required versions of the library now let us move to the jwt util class in the token generation logic as per the latest library methods we are using are deprecated which are add claim set subject set issues at and set expiration so let me create the token with new methods replacing these deprecated methods add claims is replaced by claims set subject is replaced by subject similarly set issued at is replaced by issued at and set expiration is replaced by expiration that's all we need to update in token creation we also have used few deprecated methods while parsing the token to obtain all the claims let us fix those as well in this parser builder does not exist anymore set signing key and parse claims jws are deprecated here we have used parser instead of parser builder set signing key is replaced with verify with and parse claim jws is replaced with parse signed claims also the methods we call in the end which was get body is deprecated that is replaced with get payload with only these changes we have upgraded our jwt setup to the latest version now before we declare that we have won let us just test few scenarios silently yes everything is working fine and now safely we can say that the upgrade is successful so today we have improved our application a lot by introducing role based access control and upgrading it to the latest version of jwt by also getting rid of deprecated features if this video helped you understand the jwt and spring security concepts with the real coding example please give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel also press the bell icon so that you will get a notification when i upload any new video your feedback is very important please comment whatever you like in the video or anything which i need to improve on in the next video i am planning to get rid of auth controller itself so that the filters we have created specifically the authentication filter should be enough to authenticate the user generate the token and send it back to the user also we will see how global exception handling is implemented and how we can improve the code quality using sonar cube analysis once again thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video till then happy coding